still Tuesday, January 2017. So taking a slight deviation away from the markets and political news, this is for those who are a bit more of a deeper thinker, because the more you find out about things, the more you find out how you were taught the wrong things through the indoctrination camps, what most people call schools. So whether this article is actually accurate, it requires the ability to think outside the box and have cognitive thinking. So the title of this is What we know about the 12 month calendar is all wrong. Why we should be using the 13 moon cycle. This is published on the 9th. Again via Operation Disclosure. Source is True Theory by Luke Miller. Is what we all know about the calendar all wrong? Life is one big cycle made up of lots of decreasing smaller cycles, perhaps moving infinitely in both directions. One second, one minute, one hour, one day, one week, one month, one year, one decade, one century. This is all just a cycle of time too. We also have life cycles, karma cycles, body cycles, relationship cycles, behaviour cycles, sleep cycles, energetic cycles, earth cycles and planetary cycles and perhaps infinite cycles within all of these cycles. And that's why guys when I refer to things in the markets, everything is cycles. Given the nature of this, it, will, it could be argued that how we measure cycles could have a significant impact on our mental, physical, spiritual and all-round well-being. This is certainly the idea put forward by the World 13 Moon Calendar Peace Movement, taken from their website. Quote, time is of mind. Change your calendar, change your time, change your time, change your mind. End quote. The 13-month cycle is connected with nature, the moon and the female biological clock. So it is thought that converting to this will sink us more into the natural flow of things. The 13 moon calendar has 13 28 day months, with each month being divided into equally 4 weeks. 13 times 28 equals 364 days. There is one extra holiday added at the end of December and the end of the year, December the 29th. This is often known as a year day and does not belong to any of the weeks. This brings the total to 365 days. The 13 moon calendar starts on January the 1st, as does the Georgian calendar, and the 12 months are named in the same order as our current one. However, there is an extra month called Sol that takes place between June and July, Sol meaning sun. This sits in the middle of the summer in the northern hemisphere, and the name of the new month was chosen to pay respect to the sun. The leap year contains 366 days and is the same as the standard leap year. There is one every year in which the number can be divided by 4, except when the year number can be divided by 100 or 400. So while the year 2000 fell on a leap year, the years 1700, 1800 and 1900 were not. The 13 moon calendar inserts the extra day on June the 29th between Saturday the 28th of June and Sunday the 1st of Sol. A leap day, the same as year day, are not considered a part of a week. They are after Saturday and before Sunday, so it could be called a double Sunday. Every month also begins on a Sunday and ends on a Saturday, meaning every year will also start on a Sunday. All the months look like this. Starting on Sunday the 1st and, and, and ending on Saturday the 28th. This system is similar to that of the Mayan calendar, which many thought ended in 2012. However, the traditional Mayan calendar, according to the World 13 Moon Calendar Peace Movement, was a quote closeout of the 5,125 year old great cycle of history and the 26,000 year evolutionary cycle ending in 2012 to 2013. In the natural world, there is no such thing as time, only rhythm, motion and cycles. Moving to a different measurement of time that is synced with this could well be the answer to moving humanity towards a harmonious rhythm. Interesting nonetheless guys, because the whole system is designed to make humanity feel out of whack and out of rhythm with what supposedly are the natural cycles, all in order to drain you down further 
and indoctrinate the wrong information into you over over decades. But obviously the whole implementation of time means very little in the universal scheme of things. But obviously in the day-to-day -day life, everything about your movements is based upon time. Your whole life revolves around a clock. But what is to say that that clock is actually accurate in its time cycle? And wouldn't life be so much more comfortable outside of that restriction of a nine to five? So we'll leave that one there and move over to this next article, which I find quite interesting. So, again, published yesterday on the 9th, Benjamin Fulford report, Countdown to the New Age Begins. The battle over planet Earth is coming to an end as the final Khazarian Mafia underground bases and strongholds fall. White Dragon Society sources report. However, there is still some heavy-duty last-minute horse trading going on between East and West as the January the 20th start of the presidency of Donald Trump approaches. According to sources involved in negotiations, the future of our planet and our species is what is at stake. The big battle still to be concluded. Who exactly will be controlling the process of creating and distributing money, which is the real source of power on this planet? Put another way, what is at stake is the process of deciding what we as a species do in the future. With a little over one week to go before the Trump presidency begins, it is a good time to take note that despite his name, he is not the one holding the Trump cards in this high stakes world poker match. When the US dollar became the de facto world currency after World War II, it was backed by gold and US GDP was worth 50% of world GDP. Now, the so-called US dollar is backed by nothing. The US has no gold. And the US GDP, as measured by the IMF, is just 15.6% of world GDP on a purchasing power parity real basis. Furthermore, the US was the world's greatest creditor nation at the end of World War II, and now it is the most deeply indebted nation in the history of the planet. By contrast, China now controls 17.9% of world GDP, has plenty of gold, and is the world's greatest creditor nation. The members of the China-led Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank, AIIB, now over 100 countries, control close to 80% of world GDP, while the US and its slave state Japan, the final anti-AIIB holdouts, control less than 20%. This means that if China and its Western allies make a grab for control of the world's financial system, they will succeed. However, the US military industrial complex does have some big cards to play, many of them connected to its secret space and high-tech programs. The US secret government is getting ready to show some of these cards, including much of the technology behind the 6,000 patents. That, according to the US Academy of Sciences, has been suppressed for, quote, national security, end quote, reasons, Pentagon officials say. The real question many of us want the answer to, when some of these secrets are revealed, is, are two separate realities, one involving space colonization and one earthbound, about to merge into one? There is plenty of evidence, even for the most hard-nosed and fact-based among us, that the official version we are being given of history is full of contradictions and secrets. The White Dragon Society and their allies will be demanding and receiving answers about things like why manned space exploration suddenly stopped in the 1970s. It is very clear from various accidents that have happened since then that any manned exploration vehicle trying to leave Earth's orbit is destroyed, ostensibly by the ionosphere. Agents from the White Dragon Society were told by intelligence agency sources with clearance levels high above that of the president of the shallow US state that the planet has been put under quarantine because some very dangerous entities have taken shelter here after losing an intergalactic war. These entities are now surrendering and freeing the hostage surface populace of this planet in the process, these sources say. If what these people are saying is true, then in the near future, the benevolent galactic forces will open a wormhole in Antarctica and allow the surface population of humanity contact with the universe at large. That may be why religions, political and science luminaries have been visiting Antarctica recently. This month, Russia's Vladimir Putin is expected to be the latest 
bigwig to visit here. The fact the US has confined all of its aircraft carriers to port for the first time since World War II may be a sign of something big about to happen. If so, we can expect some sort of earth-shaking announcement out of Antarctica soon. We shall see. This sounds way too out there for many of us to accept, but there can be no doubt a high-level war has been taking place on the surface of this planet. For one thing, there is plenty of evidence which would hold up in any court of law or war crimes trial that the leadership of the Western world has been engaged in mass murder. Let us not go far back in history. Let us even ignore the hundreds of millions of people killed in the 20th century and just look at events since the year 2000. Since then, we have had a regime in the US that has ignored international law and used terror and mass murder to manipulate its own citizens and those of other countries into war. The latest campaign of terror started with the September 11, 2001 9-11 false flag terror attacks. Since then, the US leadership invaded the Middle East and murdered hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. It has also been spreading biological weapons like HIV, SARS, Ebola, bird flu, etc in an attempt to start mass pandemics. The Western leadership also used its control of the dollar printing system to try to create mass starvation by bribing farmers into growing fuel instead of food. It has also used earthquake and tsunami causing nuclear weapons against Haiti, Indonesia, Japan etc. This is mass murder and can be directly linked to people like George Bush Jr, Hillary Clinton, David Rockefeller, etc. Somebody broke into the writer's home recently and attempted to delete all the copies I have of a tape recording of when I was offered the job of finance minister of Japan by a representative of former Japanese finance minister, Heizu Takenaka, in exchange for agreeing to participate in a campaign to kill 90% of the world's population. Takenaka works for the Rothschild and Rockefeller mafia families behind this plan. I still have many copies of this tape hidden but the fact they would try to delete the evidence shows clearly how scared of justice these people are. Their increasingly shabby and desperate psychological warfare tactics are also a sign of the deep panic these people are in. Just take a look at last week's pathetic attempt to derail the Trump presidency by asserting, without any evidence, that Russia hacked the US election. This Hail Mary pass attempt to derail the Trump presidency failed utterly as did their previous vote recount campaign, and as will anything else, including Trump assassination, that they might plan. Their fake truck attacks in France, Germany, and now Israel are also not producing the desired results. People have become immune to their age-old use of street theatre, often including real murder, to manipulate the masses. Their false flag attacks are now routinely exposed as such within minutes of their being announced. That is because the regime has lost power. Thanks to the victory of the military and the agency white hat forces behind Trump, we have been promised and expect a war crimes trial once Trump takes power. The White Dragon Society, for its part, would settle for a South African style truth and reconciliation committee. There are also some mopping up operations going on in the run up to the Trump presidency. Quote, more deep underground military bases destroyed as Kabul who refuse amnesty are terminated. End quote was how Pentagon sources described the state of play. Also, quote, New York nuclear arms were disarmed and a Vancouver Underground Rail demolished, end quote, the sources say. The Paris Conference on January the 15th is also being convened to impose a two-state solution on Israel, the last holdout of the Khazarian Mafia, and will use sanctions to force the regime there to, quote, really make peace, end quote, the sources continue. The world is, quote, sick of Israel, tantrums, and crimes against humanity, end quote, they note. Getting back to the horse trading, the Western military industrial faction is taking two tacks, vice versa, the Asians. On one level, they are seeking a Christian alliance with Russia, Europe, the Americans, and the Christian parts of Africa to stand equal with the Asians. On another level, they support the creation of a meritocratic, democratic and transparent new world architecture that will make sure international criminal crimes like the Khazian Mafia will never again be allowed to foment war, terror and suffering around the planet. Overall, once it is finished removing the criminals from within its ranks, the Western military industrial complex will offer its technological and military might to the service of humanity as a whole. Pentagon and agency sources say,
And so, as the year 2017 begins, so does a new age start to unfold. Let us make it a golden age. And that's obviously from the BenjaminFulford.net website. Thanks for watching.